Mark Gardner is the business development manager, he tells me, of Gulf Oil's race fuels. Much more importantly than that, he lives in the house that is just at the bottom of my garden and he bought it from the person who sold me my MGB GT and also sold Chris his four post lift. Mark is really fed up about that because he wanted the four post lift and it had gone by the time he bought the house. And I think, Mark, it's over to you. Thank you very much, Austin, and uh, it's a pleasure being your neighbour for the last six months, I think. <laughs> um, we'll see what the summer brings. Yes. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for having me here today. I very much appreciate it. The hot topic, obviously, for today will be E10. I understand there'll be a lot of you with lots of knowledge already in the room about this, so I don't wish to go over things you already know. So, hands up in the room, who knows whether their car can run on E10 or not? Why do you believe your car can run on E10? Gentleman with the camera. Oh, no, I believe it can't run on E10. It can't. Who can? Is the question. Who can run on E10 in this room? <laughs> Talk about your MGs, gentlemen. Ah, right. <laughs> right. So, if you have a K series engine in your MG, you can run E10. No problem at all. Rover have said when they were before they closed, they kept all their records. When asked by Land Rover what was possible, basically all K series from 1996 are compatible to run E10. Don't confuse that though, we've been able to store your car with it in because you cannot. This picture tells a thousand stories. This is an E10 fuel straight out of the pump that was left on a side for 20 weeks, not touched. As you see, it separates, and this is what's going to happen in your fuel tanks when you park your cars up. Your car will run on it absolutely fine when you first put it in. So as you can see, this isn't going to be great for when you restart your car. The first shot you're going to get is all going to be ethanol full of water, which won't be very good for you. The other thing ethanol does is it attacks aluminium, brass, and rubber seals, particularly carburettors and fuel lines, which obviously creates you a fire hazard across the winter period. There are some things you can do uh, that don't involve my product at all. Is you can use Super Plus. Currently in the South East, SO Super Plus has nothing to up to a maximum of 5% ethanol in it. So you take a gamble because they change the mix between summer and winter as to which one you end up with. So you can do that. And you could use a stabiliser to go in the fuel tank which would help the separation problem. Additives, I believe, are very much like when we went to unleaded fuels and there was a lot of snake oil and you could buy leaded pellets and they fixed all your problems in. I don't believe they're necessarily always the answer to this problem. We need to, a fuel or fuels that are completely ethanol free. There is a company in Bexhill who have several petrol stations in the area who do a 98 which are guaranteeing 100% ethanol free fuels. So if you want a day out towards Bexhill and Hastings, they are called Fuels is the name of the company. They're a local refinery down in Brighton and they have made this pledge for the next five years, which is fantastic for your day out. Where our product comes in, which is a Golf Classic or a Golf Pro Fuel, depending which can you manage to get it in. We started in one can and we've transitioned over to another because people didn't like the fact there was a picture of a chainsaw on it and thought that's all it was for. So I can only apologise for the naivety of some. Um, the fuel that we do is completely synthetic in the fact that it's a byproduct of petroleum distillation, be that for your tyres, for your fuel, for your plastics. It's a byproduct that we've refined down into a fuel, added a little bit of extra goodies to it, and it makes it into a very viable fuel for your car, your chainsaw, everything. Five year shelf life on that. So you can park your car for up to, we recommend, three years, and it will do no damage to your fuel system, it will not separate because there's no ethanol in it to separate. It does not attract water because there's no ethanol in it to attract water. Um, your fuel tanks will survive if you have, in particular, some of the things we have seen are the fiberglass fuel tanks are suffering very bad. They're going soft and they're leaking. 
which is a real problem in some vintage go-karts that we deal with and with some vintage motorcycles. I know none of you have your, your MG guys. You may well have these things also in your garage. You're enthusiasts. So some of this stuff you may also have in your garages. So removing the ethanol, getting rid of most of the petrol content in its traditional manner allows us to produce a fuel that is 99% less emission than what you currently buy at the fuel pump. So if the environment is your concern, which it is for many, this is a very good stepping stone answer. It is not the ultimate answer. The future will bring us that, but it's a very good place to begin now. You can use it in everything as a petrol engine, whichever use it is that you have. If you have a higher octane requirement, because this runs at around 97, so if you need to run a 98 or a 99, then it is possible to add an octane booster with no issue whatsoever to that it will make no difference. You can mix it with what's already in your fuel tank. You don't need to drain anything out. You can just run it through the fuel tank and it'll be fine. And again, if you wish to go to normal petrol come the summer months, you can just go into the pump, fill the car back up, and it'll just go through and work absolutely fine with it. So that's kind of our product. But I'm not really here just about the products. I want to talk to you about the whole thing to do with this E10 problem and how much worse it's going to get. I feel that we are only feeling the very small touch of this yet. This is a lot more to come. People are complaining about less fuel efficiency. Why are we getting less fuel efficiency? Anybody understand why we have less fuel efficiency? Because you need more of it to produce the same performance. So if you have a fuel injected car, for argument's sake, your fuel pump and fuel injectors are reading the ECU and they are pouring more and more fuel into the system to create the power that you are used to. Does that equate to the fact that it's actually green to coming out of your exhaust pipe? Of course it doesn't. Because no one's actually looking at that end of the car. They're only worried about ticking the box and what we're putting in this end. We've found in actual fact that some of the E10 cars, the older versions, are actually polluting more than they ever have done before. So we do understand that there are lots of issues with this. Who has a real concern? Anybody have a particular question they want to ask? Regarding, I was talking to this gentleman at the back here uh, about items to do with a new poor synthetic fuel. Is there anything that I can elude to help out with anything? Anything anybody wants to know? I think possibly um, uh, a little bit more information um, to the floor here would be interesting because uh, obviously um, uh, and I think we are interested in competition uh, yep. uh, cars as well as uh, what they do know. And dare I say, we do have one or two Porsche within the southeast centre anyway. Yeah. So if you're a normal Porsche road car, your 911s, your whatever it might be, 928s, 924s, my genuine recommendation to you is keep using Super Plus. Uh, and if you're not going to use it for a little while, I will put some air fuel in the tank over the storage period and go straight back to your 9899 as soon as you possibly can for your normal driving. Our octane rating is around 97. So to protect that car, if you're going to run it normally, up and down the motorways, I would suggest you go straight back onto, as soon as possible, your 98, 99-style fuel from a pump. But if you're storing it, get rid of the ethanol. Even if it's 0 to 5%, take it out, because it will destroy things within the car. These cars aren't built to be sat with it in. They're built to run it through the fuel lines and all day and every day, but they are not designed for it to be left in these cars. No car actually is. Not even anything you buy now is designed to have that left in there for six months or more, of any period, because of what it does. Sir? Yeah, um, apart from forgetting our MGs and all, all joining the Tesla club for the future, what, the garages that you have, Gulf, there's one near us in Chatham, yep. Kent, is that... Uh, no, sir. That's going to be an E5, E10. Well, E5, this is why we're from the race fuel division. We develop all the upcoming fuels which are tested throughout racing and are used in racing. <coughs> That's why the, the classic fuel will become available or is available in cans. But will it be available in cans as a Golf garage? No, not currently. That is a negotiation that's being happened. Because of the world of politics we live in, petrol stations and the race fuel seem to be two very different divisions with a massive company called Gulf Oil stuck in the middle and trying to get the, yes. the two links of proving to be very difficult. Uh, the story to that mainly is that there's a company called Surtas 
Certas are a petroleum company. They own the rights to the name of golf at petrol stations. So it is a badging exercise, effectively. The difference if you buy golf race fuel, it is a golf product. Uh, and I can't be more honest to the group than that about it. That's exactly how that truly works. <laughs> the golf petrol station at Silverstone is a golf petrol station. So if you go there, you will buy golf fuel. But there is no move to run our classic fuel through those pumps currently at the moment. That is in negotiation. May happen by the end of 2023. Um, but there is a contractual period still to run with that at the moment. So there will be a case where we will be able to go and buy this. But it will mean a nice trip to Silverstone go to the museum, have a look at some lovely cars and even go around the track on a track bank. It, it seems though that the future possibly lies in distributing non-ethanol fuels in certain garages. There must be a, mar there's a market here, there must be a Absolutely. market. Absolutely, and that is everything that is work in progress at the moment. Um, it's all available by a mail order system, which I'll give Austin all the details for. You can distribute to Munster Club, and it can be delivered in five or 25 litre cans to your home, so you can put in your cars. Um, Classic Oils at Bista Heritage Centre, they are the UK distributor and importer for the product. They have open days where they are going to be running a classic car filling station, so you can drive your car, cups of tea cakes, have your car filled up. Guy Lachlan, who runs that, is a fantastic gentleman, very, very knowledgeable, uh, and he's a member of many lobbyists towards the government about these fuels. Um, so he was also a great guy. He was supposed to come today, sadly he was unable to join me due to a prior commitment that came up. So they're going to have some great days, uh, and I'm not going to ask him to invite the club along to have a special day there, go through his set, to have a look at everything that he offers for his classic cars, was, the oils, all of the additives, all the bits and pieces that he has, and also refuel your cars up for you. You'll be able to happily drive home on that. Mentioning petrol, does, does what you're saying also apply to diesel? No. Diesel is, um, is a very different subject. It's already running on a 7% bioethanol base, has been for a long, long time. Uh, I don't believe they're going to up that much more than to 15% and a diesel engine will deal with that and, and the fuel system will deal with that a lot better than it does currently. Our classic cars were designed to run on leaded fuel that had none of the chemicals in now. There's over 100 chemicals to make a petrol now. Our alkali only has 20. So you don't need all of those extra things. They are there to boost performance. They are there to clean the engines. They are all of those extra added and all of those, if it's cleaning it, it's going to be reasonably harmful to be fair to you. Um, if you start with something as pure as the alkali fuels, they clean, burn anyway. You don't need to add anything to that. Um, but with the diesel situation, it's not really going to change. That will stay as it is until they come up with a, a major development to replace diesel fuel. Diesel fuel is going to be here for generations to come. They can't find anything to replace it. I'll give you an example. A shipping container ship that's going from one side of the world to the other will fill up with 75,000 tonnes of diesel to get there. Not litres, tonnes. There is no equivalent currently that manages to enable that journey to happen yet. They're working on hydrogen with boats. I mean, there's a particular yacht on that, and if you've seen it about at the moment, that is producing its own hydrogen as it goes along. It's extremely slow and it's extremely expensive currently, but they'll get there with it. <coughs> but electric cars, they're the Betamax of our world currently because we cannot build the infrastructure to support them. Wind turbines that I can go on forever for, for all the non green things that people say are green. But uh, E10 is here to stay, it's not going anywhere, so we need to protect ourselves from that. With fuels like our own, there are other brands of fuel available if you wish to Google them and search them. There are other brands of your fuel that can do the same job. So I'm not here to sell you my stuff, I'm here to answer your questions and give you some education if there's anything you need. Yes, lady? If you've got a car that takes E10, and say you have COVID lockdown and you can't use your car for three or four months, are you supposed to do something about that? Equipment? That's what's going to happen, yeah. And you need to do something about it? I would suggest you do, yeah, no. And, and, as, and as I say, we are scratching the surface of what the E10 problem is going to become. No, 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 this is, this is, this is the, if you believe it's conspiracy theory, this is the great secret of the E10 problem that's coming. 
Anything that gets left up, your car park for your holiday. Three or four weeks, you need to be careful. Mark, two things. Um, apart from, you've mentioned fuel tanks and no rubber hoses, I believe E10 will attack other metals, brass, solids. Yeah, I mentioned brass, aluminium. <laughs> secondly on that, I mean, I've been using Tesco, Tesco Dementum, which I believe yes. is five, up to 5%. Yep. I've been using that for years. I have drained the fuel tanks a couple of cars a couple of times. The cars have been sitting there over the whole of the winter all the time. No sign of any water in that at all. No, there won't be because you haven't let it settle. If you feel that that's 20 weeks. Well, the cars have been sitting there. I mean, one, one, I had drained it, one of them because yep. I hadn't used it and the, the fuel had gone stale. Yeah. So I didn't want to risk using it, so I just drained the tank yeah. from sitting there yeah. and no water came out. This is an E5. E5. Yeah. So we've doubled, doubled the content, doubled your risk. A lot of your classic cars are not sealed units anymore. They are designed to vent to atmosphere. So ethanol likes water. It likes to draw water from wherever it can. So if you have these open vented systems, it's going to be sucking water in all of the time it possibly can. This is just the separation of the two components. This doesn't really involve water at this point. This is just the ethanol separating from what it's blended with. So it's better to leave the tank full then if we can't buy this at the moment or we then, you know, if you're going no. to leave it with E5. You yeah, E5 is, E5 it. currently is your best choice. And leave the tank full if you're the car to stop Keep as much air out of it as you can, but be aware that e, the ethanol contents will still be attacking the rubbers, yeah. will still be attacking those really? items. Um, this stuff is already available now, you just need to mail yeah, order it. Fine. Yeah, um, but yeah, E5, like I said, your 98, your SO, your um, SO is the one particularly we, that have made the statement. No one else has been brave enough to make the statement that I'm aware of, uh, and we're reasonably on the finger of the pulse with that. So your SO really is your best option right now um, for what you can buy straight away at the pump. Obviously there is a cost thing involved as well, of course. It can do, yes, depending on the type of plastic it is. Yeah. See, the, the biggest issue is, this, is the E10 was never meant to be left not used. So people say about, oh, what about the big tanks in, in the fuel stations? They're filling them up twice a week. Five, six, 10, 20,000 litres. So it's constantly being churned over. You're putting it in your car, you're, you're using your 20, 30 pound up in a week. You're not leaving those currently in those cars for any period of time. And that's where we're gonna have the problem. So to summarise, those of us who've got older MGs, and we're facing the winter when we don't use them much. Yeah. We fill them as full as possible with zero to E5. Yeah. Possibly ESO in the southeast. Yeah. And try to run them, it, it, even if it's static. Yeah. We try to run them, uh, you know, just get them out of the garage, give them a run of the engine, Absolutely. and then even the salt on the road so we don't want to go out driving. Ultimately, you're supposed to be buying my stuff, sir. But, <laughs> but no, to your point, you are dead correct. That is the best choice that we have right now for sure. Yeah. Is that, is that to summarise? Yeah, pretty really much. Yeah, absolutely. The biggest message is don't leave it in there. Don't leave your stuff in your cars when you're not using them for any period. But does running the engine static help? You'll get the if you'll get the feedback into the tank, and only the E5 level is much more forgiving than the E10s that we are seeing currently. Because the E10 is only a minimum number. It can be as up to, as, it's like the zero to 5%. In the world of chemistry, zero to 5% is a massive margin of error. Well, the E10 is allowed up to 15.5% between a minimum of 10 and up to a maximum. So you're just not sure. Whereas the stuff that comes from other manufacturers, including ourselves, that is pure blended, you know exactly what you get every time you open that can, you know exactly what's in that can, you know exactly how it's going to behave. You could even tune your cars to it if you wish to, you could run it all of the time. It doesn't just have to be a storage fuel, it could be all of the time, say 99% less emissions of what you're putting in currently now. So that makes the classic car guys a little bit more eco-friendly if that's the, the, the agenda in some cases. I've got another question for Yeah. Um, I've got one car which is recommended to run on the 95 octane 
which is now E10. Yes. Should I run it on the 98 E5 or stick to the 95 octane E10? Do you know what the recommendation is? Why it's only 95? No, I don't. But I did check the website, and it's compatible with E10. Yeah. Okay. It's so a over 14 car. So octane number to get into an octane conversation very quickly is, is very misunderstood. What you find at the pump, Ron, is the retail, retail octane number. The Mon, which is a motorsport octane number, is probably the most important one that you'll need because that's the true level of the fuel under test. You'll probably find your car will run absolutely fine on the 98 because you'll find the Mon number that they'll specify is very much near what your 98 Ron would be. There's always, there's always a disparity. So you'll very much find you're about to be fine on that, absolutely. An octane is only they're really there to prevent detonation and control some heat. The more octane you have, the more timing you can put in and not have the detonation. If you've got a turbo car, the more pressure you can apply. That's what the octane kind of is there to help do, uh, is to allow you to extract more. So I wouldn't be too concerned. Uh, we've seen instances where people are running a 102 race fuel in a car that's designed allegedly for 98 or 95 with no true will effect. In actual fact, they can get a bit more because they can tweak the timing and things. So I wouldn't be too concerned. So wouldn't damage a 95 recommended car to put 98 in? No, sir. One quick one. Of course. Private residence, what's the maximum amount of petrol you can store legally? Not in your car is 30 litres. You can apply for a licence through the local trading standards in this area, not the fire brigade as it is in London, um, but uh, here it's your local trading standards. You can explain to them, I need to carry 50 litres. It will be in two 25 litre cans. Most of the time, it's not a problem whatsoever at those levels. You step over the 50 litres, then they start not to like you very much. And want you to do lots of different things to be able to do it. Um, hence why our cans come in 25s or in 50s if you've got two cars. So there's various sizes. We can even do a 5 litre if required as well. If you've got a bike or something like that, you can use a 5 litre. But we try to keep under that rule for everybody. And the cans are really nice because they've got the proper gold logo on them. They're good to turn into chairs as well, which is something you do or put them on eBay and sell it to somebody who wants to turn it into a chair. So you can get some of your money back that way as well. <laughs> Trust me, if you go on Facebook Marketplace, you'll find plenty of our cans for sale. <laughs> our stuff has a five-year shelf life in the can. Three years recommended in your car. So, if you do have a... Austin will have all of that information. What we will do, we'll send Austin all the links for everywhere you can buy it. Uh, all of the dealers with all of the pricing, whichever one is nearer to you, you can either collect or you can have it delivered to you for a charge. Uh, collection obviously is the cheapest option, delivering fuel is reasonably expensive. So if there's a few of you who would like to buy it, um, do let Austin know and I can do a group buy for you and we can arrange distribution via Gulf directly for you as a, a treat for the MG Club, particularly this centre. Over the fence, what happens? Yeah, we'll be, we'll be turning, turning Austin's into a bomb garage, to use his description. Uh, I've heard a warning though, with that on the fun side of it, is the empty can is far more volatile than your full can, hence why keeping your cars full is far safer than it is having them empty. The vapour is far more dangerous than the liquid. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I'm glad you're still here, sir. My eyebrows are a bit. Yeah. <laughs> on your slide there, so yeah. maybe I missed it, but what is the yellow, what is the white? Maybe I missed the point. <laughs> <laughs> it's on for a long time. This is the, this is the milk, sir. Yeah. And this is the cough medicine. <laughs> That's what I'm this is, this is the ethanol drop into the bottom of the milk. Oh, and this is the rest of what it's mixed with the hydrocarbon section that actually makes the rest of the chemistry up. The other 99 products that they put in. <laughs> yeah. Which is pretty much the genuine case of that. I saw on YouTube some people add water and then separate it themselves. It must be an absolute nightmare to do. <laughs>
There was a gentleman, I don't know if you've, if you've caught the stories of, of that, or if you've caught the stories of a guy who killed five people doing exactly that, blew his flat up. He, <laughs> and that is, that is, killed the five occupants of the flat. That is, <laughs> that is, that is, that is uh, you could, that's a true story. You could Google that, that actually did happen. Yes, that was, um, you know. <laughs> yes, that's right, absolutely, yeah. Um, so there's, there's lots of things we could, you could do. You don't have to use ours. There's lots of ways you can do it. <laughs> yes. It still separates if you if you're not if it's just left to stand. Yeah, that's. Really the, it, it'd be sat there for a bit, but if you take it out and then put it back in, would that solve the problem? Shake it up. You stir it around. It's it's a shake. <laughs> so, how can I put it? The space. <laughs> So the can's been empty, the can's full of air, air's got the water in it, you put the FNO in it, it sucks up all of that water out of all of that air. You may only leave a little gap in the top, but because it wasn't sealed um, in a controlled manner, let's say, I'm not saying they're vacuum sealed, but they are extracted as they are sealed. So they don't have R, so you'll notice when you open the can it'll go pop. A bit like when you push the button when your food's gone bad, yeah? It means you've got air in it. And that's going to what's going to happen with anything you take out into a jerry can of some sort or another can. It will be contaminated. There'll be a water element in there just from the air itself. And that stuff loves it. If you put it in your bath, you'll have no bath. Sorry? So I'm just curious. Yeah. No, it, it's, it's not best practice. It's, it's not a best practice thing to do. The best thing to do is to, whatever you're putting in there, um, be it the E5 is to run it like this gentleman said uh, or, or if it's one of our products or a similar product is to leave it in the cars as they're designed to do. Yeah. Taking it in and out exposes them to too much contamination possibility. So it doesn't mix up again if you give it a good shake. Yeah. 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 Not in the way that it's chemically bonded right. at the refineries. I'm sure you could. We haven't tried yet. That'll be our, that's our next. That's our next experiment after Christmas. Is to see, shake it up and see if it works properly. Still, this is an unofficial. This is the unofficial laboratory of golf. This is this is uh, <laughs> being conducted by a customer of ours. Funnily enough, in his kitchen that currently sits. Uh, but that's the next thing. He doesn't believe us. He doesn't believe what we're saying is true. So we've asked him to put it to the test and tell us he's independent and this is where he said sent this to us and went, oh my god, 20 weeks. That would have been in my car or my chainsaw or my... So let's see what it does. I'll keep Austin informed, I shall send you the photos.